All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Uh, we're going to pick up our discussion where we left off last time on the upper overhead panel. Uh, we started talking about this this area up here. This is the the maintenance uh, panel once again. And, you know, last time we, we talked about the uh, the top third of this this panel here. So we'll continue our discussion and uh, go down to the middle here. Uh, the first one that we see here on the left uh, is this blue pump override switch. Now, one of the things I want to point out too while we're here is uh, this is the first time we've, we've seen this on our, our tour around the flight deck. Um, this little kind of caged portion over the, the switch here. Um, you might hear this referenced um, or, or the correct terminology for it. Uh, you'll hear is a, a guarded switch. And uh, these are switches that the manufacturer has determined that you know, for whatever reason, um, an inadvertent, you know, press of the switch would, you know, have some more serious ramifications. So they, they kind of put this system in place where like you couldn't accidentally like bump, you know, this, this switch if you were moving around the flight deck without physically lifting up this little um, like metal cage right here. And, and the way this works is pretty simple. There's just a hinge on the top of these buttons that you just kind of lift up down here and you can put your finger under there. And a lot of times too, it's, it's a procedural thing where anytime you come across a guarded switch in a flight deck, you know, you want to verify with your, uh, your flying partner that, uh, you know, that, that is indeed the switch you're, you're intending to push and you, and you both kind of agree up upon it before you manipulate any of these guys down here. But, um, so that, that's, uh, like I said, one interesting thing to, to point out a, a guarded switch and we'll, we'll see those a few other places around the flight deck and lots of airplanes have, you know, this, this type of thing built into them. So, um, if you've been wondering uh, what those are, or why they're there, that's what they're all about. But um, like I said, the first one here, the blue pump override switch. So on the Airbus, um, we have three hydraulic systems and we'll kind of talk about this further in depth down the line as it gets pretty technical. But, you know, we have a, a green, blue and yellow hydraulic system on the airplane. And, and just a little bit about those, you know, the green and yellow systems are kind of the, um, the more um, intensive, if you will. Uh, systems on the plane. I'll kind of show you in a minute um, a little bit more what I mean about that. But the blue system is kind of like the the standby backup kind of um, emergency system, if you will. If you if you lost um, capability in, in the other systems there, um, blue kind of um, you know provides you enough to <laughs> to kind of get home kind of thing. So, anyways, this this blue pump though. Um, there is um, an electric pump in the blue hydraulic system here that normally it comes on after the first engine starts. So let's say you're sitting at the gate, both engines are shut down, the blue pump would not be operating. So uh, for whatever reason, you know, they built this switch in here that, you know, if a mechanic needed to come out and uh, get that blue pump to turn on, you know, at, you know, plane sitting at the gate, no engines running, uh, maybe they needed to test it or do some work on it or something like that, you could use this blue pump override switch here and that would override the normal automatic logic where like I said pump comes on at the first engine start and goes off uh, when engines are shut down um, you could you get the pump to turn on at any time you you uh, you wanted it to so uh, moving from there to the right uh, we have these leak measurement valves and just as the name implies you know they're, they're built into the system to um, give the plane a way to you know give some feedback about if there is leakage in you know one of the hydraulic systems um, there's, there's a way to measure that and, uh, and let you know that. Uh, once again, I, I think that's, um, you know, something more along the lines of like a, you know, a maintenance procedure that, you know, something the mechanics can, you know, kind of track more readily than we can in the flight deck. But um, as I said, just, just as the name implies, uh, these, these valves are there to, to, to measure hydraulic leakage in the system. Now, normally these valves are in the open position and, and I'll show you a graphic in a second about where they are in the system. Um, but these buttons here, what they do is they close the valve. So once again, I'm not sure, you know, from the mechanics standpoint, um, which procedures require them to, to turn those off. But I imagine it's probably got something to do, you know, when, when they're servicing the system, um, you know, you want to close those valves, um, you know, if they're refilling it or something, or maybe they're doing some sort of system tests on it. Um, there's a reason uh, that they would need to close those. And that's what these buttons, once again, are here for. And um, the, the last thing I'll show you, like I said, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, um, one of the schematics I pulled for you on the hydraulic system here, um, it just kind of, it shows you a little bit more. First of all, um, these are the, the places in the system where those leak measurement valves are. You can kind of see they're, they're upstream from the, the flight controls and the various um, you know, components that are serviced on each system. And, um, I was trying to do a little more digging to find exactly, you know, where geographically on the airframe these are. And I wasn't able to find that quite yet, but um, I'll uh, try to update this if I, 
if I do find that. I know it gets kind of technical, but um, and and as I said before too, um, you know, green, yellow, and blue systems respectively. I mean, you could just see here. Um, these are the components uh, in each case that um, each hydraulic system services. So, you know, you've got, you know, flight controls and, you know, braking and all this kind of different stuff. And you can just see physically the blue system is a little bit smaller. There's less components on it. And like I said, it, it's just kind of there uh, most of the time, just kind of, you know, standing by or assisting. And uh, as, as I said, if you had a dire mechanical situation on the aircraft that um, you lost both the, the green and yellow, you know, you, you should be able to get yourself home with just the blue system there. So, um, you know, you can, I won't read every single one of them to you, but you can kind of see here, just as I said, which component on the airplane resides on which system. And like I said, when we, when we get down to the hydraulic panel, um, on the main portion of the overhead, I'll try to, um, maybe make a few videos and, and kind of break down the, uh, a little bit more about the operation of the hydraulic system itself um, for you. Is it, it, it does get, you know, <laughs> a little complicated um, if you really want to dig in deep. But um, that's some basic information. Um, like I said, on those the, kind of the mid portion of the uh, maintenance panel on the overhead. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.